Tonight certainly looks to be a pitcher's duel. Towing the rubber will be James Shields. Shields has rebounded in 2011, making his first All-Star team and leading the AL with seven complete games. For Oakland, it'll be Trevor Cahill. Trevor looked as good as anyone in the game during the first six weeks of the season. Since then, Cahill has lacked consistency. Can big game James silence the hottest hitting team in baseball? Or will Trevor Cahill get his groove back? Stay tuned. Game three of the four-game set is next. Wednesday night baseball from the O.Co. Coliseum. A's fans coming into the ballpark, and they're looking forward to seeing their team playing pretty good baseball right now. Are the Athletics Trevor Cahill will take them on for the A's tonight. It's game three of the four-game series. A's have won the first two games of the series. It's the Rays and the Athletics coming up on Comcast Sportsnet California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. Well, the A's offense is what we're talking about lately. And Cliff Pennington, well, nobody's hotter than him, Ray. He's got 18 hits in his last 36 at-bats. You know, the one thing about Cliff, he feels so confident whether he's in the field playing defense or swinging the bat. And, man, has he been swinging the bat. You can just see he almost allows the ball to get on him before he swings. He did it in New York Friday. He also did it in this series against the Rays. A couple of pitches, as he said, normally he would take, but he's reacting on the He's swinging the bat, using the whole field, whether it's right-handed or swinging from the left side. And I think right now we're seeing the best of Cliff Pennington. And as he also said, when he swings the bat well, his defense is also playing very well. So just a complete player right now that everybody expected to see from Cliff Pennington. He's doing it all, and I think more than anything, it's a confidence that he's bringing to the park right now. And we like our pitching matchup tonight. Trevor Cahill, James Shields. And for Cahill, well, listen. He's coming off a tough, tough start. But like you said, it's not the Yankees. Right. He has to realize that he's lost four in a row. James Shields has lost four of his last five. Two outstanding right-handed pitchers. They could go deep in the contest. I think from Trevor's standpoint, he's back in the white uniform, pitching to the Coliseum. He's got White Rabbit going to be playing on Diamond Vision when he takes them out. Put it all together. Get the win streak going again. He needs to get back to 500. Tonight is a chance for him to do that. So Kay Hill, an all-star last year. Shields, an all-star this year. So it is indeed a key pitching matchup and the A's trying to make it three in a row over the Tampa Bay Rays. When we come back to the Coliseum we'll have lineups and first pitch. Stick around.
California is brought to you by AT&T and by Toyota. Check out the great deals at your local Toyota dealer today. Well, the A's wearing the all-white uniforms tonight. They take the field behind the starting pitcher, Trevor Cahill. Trevor and Ray's favorite song comes on over the loudspeaker, which means they're set to go. Game time weather is brought to you by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission-free boardwalk is now open daily. Another nice night, 65 degrees, clear and cool, as usual here at the Coliseum. Ray, take it away. Oh, nothing better than White Rabbit. Trevor Cahill's taking them out. All right, let's check out the lineups for tonight. Sent out by Joe Madden, the manager of the Tampa Bay Rays. Desmond Jennings will lead off. He's going to play center field tonight. Johnny Damon, the DH. Ben Zobrist at second. Evan Longoria at third. Kochman at first. Joyce at right. Shopping the catcher. Sam Fold seeing him for the first time in this series. It'll be in left field. Sean Rodriguez is the shortstop. There he is. I just hope White Rabbit brings it back because Trevor has won under 500. So maybe if he would just pause on the mound and listen a little bit. And he needs to get back where everybody knows he should be. His last start against the Yankees was not well at all. He, matter of fact, shortest outing his major league career. So try to recover tonight against the Rays here in Oakland, his hometown. See so what the A's look like defensively. Willingham, Chris, and Sweeney in the outfield. Sizemore, Pennington, Weeks, and Jackson around the infield. Landon Powell behind the plate. So Ryan Sweeney getting a start in right field tonight. David DeJesus will get the night off as Desmond Jennings steps in. Now, Trevor threw 61 pitches in the last start. He should be well rested. And maybe that could be good at first pitch a good sinker, which is his specialty pitch. That is something that he wants to work well, get some ground ball outs. So Cahill facing Desmond Jennings. Started in left field the first two games of the series in center field tonight. BJ Upton leading the night off. There's a strike. One and two to Jennings. Two for eight in the series. Is it just a coincidence that B.J. Upton is not playing tonight? A lot of trade rumors revolving around B.J. Upton with Thomas Beltron being traded. Sizemore guns it across. Jennings is retired. He's out number one here in Milwaukee. But there's some guys you want to hit the ball on the ground. Most guys you do. Jennings not particularly that type of guy because of the run, but Scott Sizemore played it very well. Charged it, strong throw to get the speedy Jennings for the first down. Went back to the dugout and said, man, is that ball moving a lot? I think that's what he said. Exactly. Johnny Damon right. takes a first pitch strike. I think people around baseball who know the quality of pitcher that Trevor Cahill is to be wondering so what has happened to him the last three or four starts that he has lost four in a row. But as we have also talked about, he pitches to contact. When you're a ground ball pitcher, you just hope that the ground balls are in the vicinity of your infielders. Sometimes that is not the case. Changeup drops in for a strike. So Johnny Damon behind in the count one and two. 275 with nine home runs for Damon. And that one on the inside corner. Good pitch from Cahill. Johnny Damon. Not in agreement with Sam Holbrook, but it's a strikeout. Well, very quickly getting the ball from Landon Pound, throwing this two seam fastball after the changeup, similar movement, but the fastball starts inside corner. Sam on that corner, oh, plenty of strike there. Tommy Cam showing right on the inside corner, a lot of it, and of course the height was there. I think Johnny was just fooled. So two outs in the first, and here is Ben Zobrist. He's been a very hot hitter. A home run in each of the first two games of the series. Very good numbers overall. 13 homers, 54 runs batted in. Swing and a miss. Change up. You see 81, 82 miles an hour. That's the Cahill changeup. It 
looks a lot like his fastball, the great sinker that he has. And that one hit into left field for a base hit. Ben Zobris going the other way. That's three consecutive games that the A's pitchers have retired. The first two batters, Zobris comes up and he's found a way to get on base and. At least this time, it's just a base hit. And like the home run he hit the first night. Pitch got up a little bit to him, and he might have been waiting for something with movement. But the ball stayed up, away from him, and it's the base hit to left field. Very good hitting. So here's Longoria. Longoria 0 for 5 in the series. He's walked four times. All four of those came game one. He's won seven to five on Monday night, and they won six to one last night. He's offense continuing to score runs. Tonight, Brandon McCarthy was very good. This ball almost thrown quickly enough to get Zobra sliding back. Connor Jackson catching and applying the tag on the shoulder with a hand already on the bag. And no doubt last night with Brandon McCarthy pitching the eighth inning with Grant Balfour loosening up, that there was a possibility that. Alpha would come in sometime in the eighth inning, but not showing a lot of confidence in Brandon McCarthy. Left him in the game, did a great job, finished the eight innings, and walked off proudly and let Alpha finish the game. Tapper foul up the third baseline. This is Longoria. Try to have some tough jams at Brandon McCarthy, but he made the quality pitches when he needed to. Longoria there. And it's an excellent curveball with the cut fastball. The movement was outstanding. That one just slightly moving away from the right hander. And it was the skipper walking him. Brandon McCarthy after the eight innings. And boy, a pitcher definitely likes to walk off after completing the inning instead of having to walk off and watch a reliever come in. 113 pitches last night for McCarthy. With a little help from that guy, Kurt Suzuki, who's not in the lineup tonight. Past the A's bullpen foul. Count stays at one and two. We talked about the A's offense last night. Three walks scored. They had two sack flies. And then Kurt Suzuki's two run double. Pennington was perfect, as he has been against the Rays. The beard keeps growing. Connor Jackson. Suzuki will catch tomorrow. Gory checked his swing. Close pitch. No swing, says Paul Schreiber. First base on pile. Two and two to count. Trying to bring the ball back in the outside corner. Maybe just a little bit low. On the ground to Pennington, who double clutches but fires it to Weeks. Sobers is outside, retired to hit and a runner left. James Shields heads to the mound. No score after a half an hour.
Wordsmith. Young man you just saw, Jamile Weeks, then Chris Matsui Willingham, Jackson Sweeney Pennington, Sizemore, and Powell. James Shields on the mound for the Rays, and he is good. He will pitch deep in the game. He has three, maybe four quality pitches that he will throw, especially change up curveball anytime in the bat. Get some ground balls, quick move to first base, just a complete package for Joe Madden is James Shields. Big game James, they call him, right? Yeah, he's him? having his record's not really showing it. Nine and eight. Run support has been an issue. But his numbers everywhere else are really good. There's a 90 mile hour fastball here, fluctuate between about 87 to 93 with the fastball. Biggest thing for him is ability to throw a changeup curveball anytime he wants to, which can make it tough on a hitter, especially in a fastball count. Sam Fold back to his position in left field. 0 oh, 2 the count to Weeks. He'll be followed by Crisp and then Matsui. Fold makes too many great plays to be playing so shallow. Swing and a miss. So on three pitches, Weeks strikes out. Saw so fold in left field. Here's the rest of the defense. Fold, Jennings, Joyce in the outfield. Longoria, Rodriguez, Zobris, Kochman on the infield. The shopping is the catcher. So here's Coco Crisp. So for Shields, the breakdown numbers, fourth in the league in ERA. First in complete games, tied for first in shutouts with three. Fifth in innings pitched, third in strikeouts, and sixth in opponents' batting average. So he's really having a nice year, but again, run support an issue. How do you, how do you think you'd fit in the Yankees' rotation yeah. with their offense? How many starts has he made? <laughs> this is his 20, he'd be 21 and 0. <laughs> <laughs> Those numbers you just mentioned about his success, and you look at his record, which is game over 500. You give him some offense, and well, he would be a tough pitcher to even think about trading because he's so good. But the Rays just keep producing, and with the pitchers in a way, the starters. Shields, 29 years old, and his contract is a bit of an interesting one. It has. Three consecutive club options, and those options are for 2012, 2013, and 2014. So basically, the Rays have him wrapped up for three years after this. Coco with a base hit. And the Dodge Charger keys to the games. Swing and A's. They are definitely the swing and A's right now, so keep swinging. Get some run support for Trevor Cahill and Cahill and Shields. Struggling, uh, they're very talented, no doubt about it. There's numbers described and show for both pitchers, but it's one of those that you maybe see the managers playing infield in, doing some things, trying to bundle a little bit, not so much right now. Might see Coco attempt to steal, although James Shields very quick to the plate, whether it's a conventional move or slide step. Well, that's going to be a little side story tonight is Shields and how he holds runners. Side. Pretty good catch. Yeah, we got a good fan catch here. Just reached up as the guy was leaning over. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. caught a ball. You see me on TV? That was good. One and to Matsui. So the deal with Shields. He's got 10 pickoffs this year. That's the most in the major leagues, and he has not allowed a stolen base. But just look at his setup out of the stretch. See Mariano Rivera, who bends over and then straightens up. Shields, similar in a sense, but everything is the same, especially pitching out of the stretch. Left center field, but Fold got. Over there quickly to make the catch. Matsui hit it hard, but Fold was there. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. 
And it's good to see Josh Willingham back in left field. Matsui with the, the night off in a sense Matsui. as a designated hitter. He's been there the last couple of nights. And, and it's something that really is working out well with Matsui able to play left field and playing so well that Josh Willingham can DH. Kind of giving him a time off his feet. Ryan Sweeney gets the start in right field. So David DeJesus who's been playing well gets the night off. A lot of this is because of the day game tomorrow. Day game after night game. Willingham hitting 241 with 13 homers and 50 runs batted in. Off the end of the bat, shallow center. Jennings comes racing in, and he's going to get there. Side retired. He's going to hit. Runner left. No score after one. in theaters this Friday, July 29th. No score after one from the O.co Coliseum, the A's and the Rays. Cahill will face Kochman, Joyce, and Shopping. Kochman, 328, four home runs, 29 runs batted in. And normally, a hitter would swing at the pitch that he just took, but when you're swinging about as well as Kochman is, he will take it. That time's a pretty good pitch. And if you swing at it, you're going to hit a ground ball to second base, probably. Well, that's a confidence that come about with Cliff Pennington, and he just feels that he has seen the ball so well and has been to the point that you take the pitch. If it's close, I think he's going to get a better pitch to hit. Three and one to Kochman. Catches the outside corner. Kochman hitting in the fifth spot for the Rays. Chopped over the mound, right near the bag, but Pennington has it. Throws in the dirt. Jackson digs it out. Nice play all around by Pennington and Connor Jackson. One out. A little surprise that Cliff did not stop. He utilized his strong arm, threw it off balance, as range far up the middle and really turned to the side. But through the hop battle, I guess you could say, the scoop a very nice one because I thought initially the ball was a little bit farther out in front of Connor Jackson, but both Pennington and Jackson playing well. One with the beard, one without. I don't know that Brady Pennington would like to have that. 
Rust beard. Oh, he's you know, dead. Scare him. <laughs> Although I don't think if Cliff Pennington grew a beard, I don't think it would be as dark as Connor James. No, no. And he wouldn't grow it as fast either. <laughs> Connor can grow a fast beard. Matt Joyce up the middle. Weeks ranging far to his right. Throws and a nice play by Jamal Weeks. So two outs. Hayes made a roster move today. They brought up Tristan Magnuson. He's pitching well in Sacramento. That's the good news. The bad news is Joey Devine option to AAA Sacramento. So Joey lately really struggled with his control. And not missing by a little bit, but missing by a lot. Not a playbook that Rick Rodriguez is giving to Tristan. That's kind of uh, maybe the scout report on these players. You know, as far as Joey Devine, we saw him in New York with uh, having trouble throwing strikes, maybe because of the heat and humidity. But Ron Romantic said basically just need to work on the mechanics a little bit. And you do that at the minor league level. And you know Joey Devine, of course, coming off Tommy John surgery, missing two seasons. He will be back and he will continue to pitch well. 0 oh 2 to Kelly Shopping. Shopik with a long home run in this series. And on three pitches, he strikes out. A couple of strikeouts for Cahill. We go to the bottom of the second. No score. Show tunes and presented by the Bay Area News Group begins after the A's play the Twins here at the Coliseum. Bring the family and your picnic blankets and enjoy the show from the outfield grass. For tickets go to openathletics.com slash tickets. Friday night, get your tickets. Another fireworks display. The best pyro spectacular show you will see in the Bay Area. And maybe at most parks around baseball. Diamond Vision always does a great job with the music. Choreographed with the fireworks here. Get to go down on the field. Best ball, first pitch strike to Connor Jackson, followed by Sweeney and Pennington. We're talking to Clay Wood, the head groundskeeper, and we're going to have a nice surprise when we come back after the next road trip, right? Yeah, Clay wasn't uh, wasn't real thrilled when he was telling us the story, and we certainly understand. So the story is now. Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Or maybe you should tell. Him. Raiders on Thursday night. First the exhibition game, the 11th. Q shot toward the shortstop, Rodriguez. Jackson's out. So the Raiders' first ex exhibition game is on the 11th, which is a Thursday night. The A's come home from a road trip on that Thursday and play a home game here 
Friday night. Raiders game starts at 7. <laughs> so he has exactly 24 hours to do his thing. Mr. And I, Claywood and his gang that just changes this whole place around. It's amazing. And I don't know if Clay Wood has called the Texas Rangers to cancel batting practice on the field on Friday the 12th, but might as well because there's no way the field will be ready. Oh, boy. They do a tremendous job, of course, Clay and his crew handles the field, but the bleachers have to be brought into center field. And I guess the good news is that they'll be on the field just sometime during that uh, road trip. The A's will be gone. And that's all this out of here, of course, those of you who have watched football know that's where the bleachers are. And the grass looks beautiful now, but it's changed considerably. Jennings on the move. He's not going to get it. One hops the wall in left center field. Sweeney has a one out double. Good looking swing by Ryan Sweeney. Well, gets a chance to play tonight and comes up big against. Shields with a pitch away and off speed the curveball that Ryan Swinney stayed with it. I think what Bob Melvin's comment about Ryan Swinney is yet to hit a home run this year, but playing infrequently with the addition of you know, Jackson coming back from last year, Willingham, De Jesus, Ryan Swinney coming off knee surgery, not playing as regularly as in the past, but I think we all know that Ryan Swinney will eventually be a home run hitter. Have to play consistently though to develop that type of swing. Pennington steps in. This is the guy you'd want up with a runner at second base, Cliff Pennington. He's five for five in this series with three walks, so he's been on base eight consecutive times. He's got a homer, three RBIs, he's got a double, he has scored three runs. Stretch it out a little bit. Since the All Star break, a 500 average. So his average is up to 264. Five home runs and 31 runs batted. In. That's the good changeup. See, Shields' changeup, just looking at the miles per hour compared to Kale's, Shields is 84 85. But he probably throws a little bit harder than Trevor Kale with the fastball. Still, a differential is not what you normally see 10 to 12 miles an hour, but he doesn't have to because essentially it's almost like throwing a batting practice fastball, which can be as good as a change. And if you're a true fastball change up pitcher, you want the 10 to 12 mile an hour difference. But Shields, because he has the excellent curveball, his fastball can vary the velocity of his fastball as well, is in three plus pitches. Two pitch so it's a breaking ball that's inside. So a full count with Scott Sizemore waiting in the on deck circle. Kelly Shopping doing a very good job so far. Game is young, but he has done a good job blocking balls in the dirt. Former Cleveland catcher and now with the Tampa Bay Rays, second year. It's not going into that deep dip. He did it a couple times early, yeah. but I don't know if he just does it with the runner at first. Yeah. Jennings goes back. Sweeney to second, and he thinks about tagging, but stays there. Two outs. In an interview with Cliff Pennington on the age radio, and I went up to him and I said, superstitious. He says, no, and I said, well, good. Your pregame show. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to ask you about how hot you are. <laughs> well, and I, I talked defense first part, you know, but he is swinging so well and seeing pitches so well. But he said, no. But there are some guys who are playing well and hitting well or pitching well, and they'll say, yeah, because if they go over or they have a bad game, they blame it on me. It's your fault. I wish I could control right. things like that. Yeah. Don't we? We'd be in first yeah. place. I guarantee that. <laughs> That's right. So it's not uncommon to walk by a guy and say, hey, hey, hot. Put his hands over his ears. Right. Yeah. 
Going one to Sizemore. There's a base hit left field. Here comes Fold. Here comes Sweeney. The throw to the plate is there, and the tag by Shopik, and Sweeney's out. It was a perfect one hop throw by the left fielder, Sam Fold, and the A's do not score. This throw, it was a perfect one hop throw. Well, look where he's playing defensively. Shallow, a one hop to him, and a one hop to his catcher, Kelly Shopper, with six feet, 220 pounds. Ryan Sweeney trying to avoid the tag and sliding inside the home plate area. Shopper just put the foot on the plate. Not much Ryan Sweeney could do, especially with the ball and the catcher was met that quickly. And there's the foot over the plate or in front of the plate blocking it, and then. Swing to going around, but he tagged it before, got the hand on the plate. But Fold playing shallow, we have, of course, seen many of his tremendous defensive plays that he has made. And because of those defensive plays, he plays shallow. He can go back on the ball, but here are just a few. Sam Fold, that's a big one, Chicago, completely left his feet. And then going back, there's one going back on the ball, playing at his home park, going up against the wall. And those great uniforms at the trot, charging, diving. Well, they had a, a promotion. They gave him Superman cape or something. They gave away capes because he's playing like Superman. Well, you watch those plays too, and, and it, you know we talk about sometimes you see outfielders dive when they really don't have to. That's not the case with him. Yeah. He is full extension. Especially the one in Chicago in right field. Yeah, Going awesome. to the right field line. And it looked like he was Superman just leaving his feet to dive for the ball. I mean, even Hawk Harrelson, the home announcer for the White Sox, gave him mercy. <laughs> <laughs> Which you, is good. That's right. You know, that's a great play if Hawk gives you that mercy. Recognizing, of course, a great play. Rodriguez called out on strikes. That's the third strikeout for Cahill, so he's off to a good start. Well, look at the movement on the pitch to Rodriguez. He's got some great movement and coming back from the outside. He didn't like the call, but height wise, just below the belt, and it did have the plate. So the movement on Trevor Cahill pitches tonight are great. Top of the order, Desmond Jennings, who grounded out in the first <laughs> inning. Sizemore, the third baseman, in on the grass. There's the changeup, and it drops in there for a strike. One and two. That one at 80 miles an hour.
It's a fun time for a catcher in the case tonight. It's land the power catching Trevor Cahill because man, when you have a pitcher the ball is moving as much as it is, a curveball, change up, two seamer, put down anything, and you can set up a game plan nicely. Pitcher with much movement and many pitches you can call. Pitches line right field. Sweeney on the move. He's going to have to play it on a hop. Jennings a big turn and he spins and turns back, heads to first. So two out single for Desmond Jennings. His speed, I thought he would try, especially with Ryan Sweeney, a left handed thrower, having to go hard towards oh, the foul line in right field, stop and make the throw. Ball slicing away from Ryan Sweeney a little bit, but he got to it quickly. Didn't panic, stopped, and made a perfect one hop throw. Desmond probably would have been out, but it looked like he was thinking about going for a double and then realized. Yep, got him out. So here's Johnny Damon checks his swing. Damon was called out on strikes in the first inning. Two for ten in the series. He's got a double. And a, another close play at first. We know Jennings is fast, so he is a base dealer. Might have been one of the reasons he decided not to try to go for double, thinking they might be able to steal his way in the scoring position. He's three for three in a short time that he has been in the big leagues. Stole 17 bases in Triple A this year. There's Landon Powell, very quick behind the plate. Footwork is outstanding. And I'd say he better get a pretty good jump because Landon can make up for a lot of things. Three and oh. And it's a four pitch walk to Johnny Damon. So a two out rally here for the Rays and now their hottest hitter is coming up. And that's Ben Zobrist. Now batting number 18 Ben Zobrist. So Bob Melvin giving a sign to Landon Powell now. Landon relaying it might be with the speed of Jennings at second show they decide to run. Damon also runs well, but throw might be going to second base if it's an attempted double steal. Dobra is swinging the bat well, they may not even attempt it. Zobrist lays off the changeup, and it's just a bit long. Zobrist had a base hit in the first inning. Went behind in the count. And base hit to left field. Zobrist is five for seven in this series. Got three walks, a couple of doubles. Side. So two and one. Six pitches to get two outs very quickly. Eight and nine for the batting order. Now three and two to Jennings, three and oh to Damon. Falling behind Zobrist. Zobrist a good take again. Three and one. That's the sign of a hitter who's hot, right? Just Sometimes you can just tell how a guy takes pitches is just laid off that one. Three one pitch is popped up. 
Sizemore coming down the line, and he's got it. Side retired. So Cahill works out of it, and the Rays strand a pair. Bottom of the third coming up. Sunday, July the 31st, Kurt Suzuki, gold jersey. Dressed like Kurt in the A's with a gold alternate jersey. Presented by Pepsi Max. For tickets, call 877-493-BALL or go to oaklandathletics.com slash tickets. Friday fireworks. Kurt Suzuki jersey on Sunday. Your fest Saturday. Landon Powell got a fastball. First pitch fouls a straight down. Be hearing that music again at Wisconsin. Yeah, poker. <laughs> oh, yeah. How weeks and crisp. One eighty eight with a homer and four RBIs for Landon Powell. That one on the ground to the shortstop, Rod Rees. So one out here in the bottom of the third. Here's our true story brought to you by McDonald's. James Shields became the first pitcher in Tampa Bay franchise history to throw three straight complete games. First pitcher since the Blue Jays, Pat Hankin, in 1970 1997, to have six complete game wins through the first 76 games. For this season, he had just five complete games in his career. And had one since 2008. This year, seven. In fact, he has more complete games than 25 other teams <laughs> in the major leagues. Seven complete games, three of them shutouts. So the relievers sitting down there just casual tonight. That one's going to get through in the center field, so Weeks has a hit. That's his first hit in this series. Rolls one through the middle. And no doubt Jamal Weeks happy to get on base, maybe try to do something. Maybe not necessarily steal a base, but go first to third, maybe try to score an extra base hit. He's also happy these games being televised back to Area where he is living, he said about an hour from Tampa, so he's looking forward to the off day when the A's are in St. Pete to play the Tampa Bay Rays, and he will go to his home about an hour away. You know what he's talking about right now? What? How to tell people buy your own tickets. <laughs> <laughs> he's no doubt getting the calls of people who want to come to the game, or game or games to watch him play the weekend series against the Rays. From this Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Coco goes around on the bun attempt.
Well, if there's a data, if there's a city to just you want to just relax on an off day. St. Petersburg would be the place. Or, there's not a lot to or, do necessarily. All the game days, but it's. <laughs> It's about as mellow and relaxing as the stop we have on the road. Liner, Jennings comes in and he makes a nice sliding catch. Joe West finally made the call. Chad Fairchild at second base looked over to Big Joe and yes, the third base umpire in this case had a better angle to see if the ball was caught or short hopped. Coco hit it well. Jamal did not take off and it was a catch. A very nice play by Jennings. To think that if BJ Upton is traded, and we don't know, his name has been thrown around quite a bit, that Jennings would take over in center field. And playing left, and Upton's been in center field. Well, it certainly makes sense, and yeah. the Upton rumors are becoming much more strong, it seems like. But also, when you have a player who's approaching three agents. Jennings going back on this one, and it's over his head. Here comes Weeks. He's going to score, and the A's have a one to nothing lead. Matsui goes over the head of Jennings in center field. Well, James Shields looking out towards center field and probably wondering, not going to ball be hit over your head. Matsui with power and he just showed the power that he has a fastball that he stayed on Jennings went back and ball hit in front of the wall did not hit the wall and Jamal waits for two outs on the move. I think he thought it might have been caught as he was not running hard to second base as he has the speed to turn it on but well, with two outs you run hard if he catches it then you can shut it down. Fortunately he did have the speed to make up for it. So Matsui's 47th RBI. Here's Willingham. So 49 runs scored now in the last nine games. That includes tonight. Trevor Cahill's got a one run support looking for another two out hit from Josh Willingham. And then McCarthy with Brett Anderson in between McCarthy and Trevor Cahill. Willingham pops it up behind first. Kochman is there. He's got it side retired. Matsui with a two out RBI double. He's lead one to nothing after three.
acceptance 1999 for the A's. You said it last night, Ray. The Rays always seem to struggle here. A's are 42 and 16 since 1999 against these Rays. So that's our Farmers Insurance report card. And you could top that with a perfect game thrown against the Rays last Mother's Day by a Dallas Braden. And we wish Dallas Braden a quick turnaround from his surgery. Doug Shelton hitting coach for Joe Madden looking on to Skipper. Longoria, Kochman, and Joyce in the top of the fourth inning. Good pitch there, but it is called a strike on the swing. So two and two to count. Yeah, Longoria got the top head of the bat out a little bit too far, trying to bring it back. It's Paul Schreiber making the call at first. Breaking ball, low. Good take by Longoria, three and two. Three two pitches low Longoria with the walk. So there were a couple big trades today. The first one was a three team and there was a whole bunch of players going each and everywhere. But this is sort of how it breaks down. The Cardinals end up with a starting pitcher that they wanted Edwin Jackson. The Blue Jays end up with Colby Rasmus the young center fielder from the Cardinals and the White Sox were in need of a reliever. They got Jason Frazier who's having a very good year and another player. So that's kind of how who got what fly ball center field Longoria tags and he's going to get to second base. So Longoria walks Cotsman with the fly out. Who was that a player and six others the Cardinals at Edwin Jackson. Well it was. The first, it was really kind of two separate trades but it was basically a three team trade but the White Sox traded Jackson and Mark Tehan. To the Blue Jays for Frazier and Zach Stewart, a, a pitching prospect. So the the Jays had Edwin Jackson. They then turned around and traded Jackson and four other guys, including Octavio Dotel, to the Cardinals for Colton Rasmus and three other guys. So that's where the the amount of players came in. So it was a, a kind of a busy trade, and then we're. Found out this afternoon that the Giants indeed have acquired Carlos Beltran. Number 10, Kelly. It's Shopping. not going to be official, I guess, till tomorrow. But did he have to approve the trade? Did he have a limited no he trade? Did, he did have to approve it, which I guess he had already said that he would. Giants gave up a top pitching prospect, a young man by the name of Zach Wheeler. It was interesting that the Mets were six million dollars left on Beltran's contract. The Mets are paying four million of it. So the more you pay, the better prospect you get, which is sort of how it works. And they, the young man, has a chance to be a very good pitcher. So it'll become official tomorrow. So the Giants get Beltran and four million dollars from the Mets, and the Mets get the the youngster Zach Wheeler. He's a pretty good player. If Beltron plays anywhere close to the way he played in Houston before he became a free agent and signed the Mets, then John's going to get a great player because he was just unbelievable. Yeah, he with had the eight Astros. home runs in that postseason with the Astros. He got a whole bunch of money from the Mets as a result of it. Hit hard and Sizemore on the dive. Gets up, throws to first in time. Sizemore saves a run with a sensational play. Well, this ball definitely headed for left field. Sizemore in foul territory and a perfect throw to Connor Jackson to save a run.
majors in pickoffs? Good question. James Shields leads the majors in pickoffs with 10 this year. First pitch to Connor Jackson here in the bottom of the fourth is outside. So we told you about the two big trades today. There was also a no hitter. Irvin Santana threw a no hitter today for the Angels against the Indians. How about that? Gave up a run in the first inning. Yeah. Because you think of a no hitter, you think of shutout. Yeah, I saw the Good score game. just looking at a, a scoreboard on my computer and I didn't think anything of it. And then an hour later, Red Reed had thrown a no hitter. So Irvin Santana, the no hitter. And the Angels beat the Indians three to one. Nelly a hard hit ball to the shortstop I bar that ate him up a little bit. He's given an error. And usually in the first inning, which that was, you can't assume a base hit. You want to make it a clean hit. Finished with 10 strikeouts. Third this year. 2-2 pitch to Jackson. So the first inning. Air stolen base. And then the runner that ended up getting to third and scored on a wild pitch. And that was how the Indians scored the run. So the Rangers tonight knew that they would have to win without uh, not have the Angels pick up a game and they're not. They're Game's got to be close to being final. Close to hosting the Minnesota Twins will be in town this Friday. Twins are leading the Rangers seven to one in the bottom of the ninth inning in Arlington. So if that score remains, Angels pick up another game. Second day in a row they pick up a full game, so they would be just two back. Three two to Jackson checks his swing and he's going to be on. Now Sizemore has been playing an unbelievable third base this time going to his right diving in the foul right territory fielder. comes up and makes Ryan. sure he has a good enough grip to make a very strong throw. He has a strong arm and a very accurate arm and he shows it right here saves a run the double that Shopik would no doubt have gotten and Instead, he's thrown out, no doubt frustrated. <laughs> Had to be, but a great play by Scott Sizemore. Well, Sizemore pushing off his left foot. We saw him running last night and scoring from second base, or first base, on a, a double, and mentioned it to him. And he said, I'm finally feeling okay. He actually, as he said, broke his ankle in 2009. He was on crutches three weeks before spring training last year. Was the opening day second baseman for the Tigers. Had ligament damage, fractured ankle. And went through all that, and of course, the left foot, when he took a throw at second base, he kind of fell against his ankle and, and broke it as well, ligament damage. But that's the push off for him playing third base. So he definitely has improved tremendously. Sweeney gets one through the left side for a hit. Ryan Sweeney is now two for two. So the A's have two on and nobody out. Well, I just served it out to left field. The shortstop Rodriguez playing close to second base and Ryan Sweeney who goes so well to the opposite field. And well, even though you want to set up for double play, I'm surprised that a lot of shortstops don't play a little bit deeper towards the hole, at least straight up at shortstop with Ryan Sweeney, but he's taken advantage of the big hole between third and short. So here's Pennington to punt, and the pitcher fields it, throws, and Kochman got back and made a nice play. Longorian Shields came close to colliding, although it really looked like it was Shields' ball all the way, but Longoria kind of came racing in there. Uh, Shields got off the mound very well, anticipated the bunt. Cliff Pennington, perfect bunt to third base, where it forced the third baseman to vacate the position, but. There's Shields right underneath him. Comes his third baseman. Kochman, a good play with Pennington hustling down the line. Longoria, Gold Glover, he started after it, but what a nice way of changing direction, not colliding with his pitcher. 
And even more so for Shields to make the accurate throw to get penalty. So see if Sizemore can get a run home. Jackson at third, Sweeney at second, infield in. Foul. Sizemore had a base hit in the second inning. That was the hit that Sweeney was thrown out at home plate. It was in the second inning. Center hit a long ways. Nobody's gonna get it. One run scores, two run score, Sizemore to third with a triple. Well, Scott Sizemore saves a run. It could have been a tie game. Then comes up second and third. Takes the outside pitch. Ultra Mo showing a great swing by Scott Sizemore. The ball carried all the way to the wall in right center. And the two base runners, Jackson and Sweeney, read it perfectly. We talked about the speed of Scott Sizemore. How about this? He's not going to slide feet first, head first slide, and nice triple. One out. Sack. Run by Cliff Pennington puts a couple of runners in score position and well the A's are hot. It's fun to see. One oh pitch to Landon Powell is a bit low, two and oh. Ultra Mo in high definition. Has to be outstanding. Yeah. Watch, huh? It's gotta be great. I like the Ultra Mo. Yeah. Like the high definition on all games here on Comcast Sportsnet California. And right now we know that everybody has HD. Kevin and Greg, the bad boys, even high five behind uh, Jamal Weeks. I don't know what's going on down there. They're excited also about the offense. Pitch is outside and it's the walk. Second walk issued by Shields in this inning. So the pitching coach Jim Hickey will come out. Career July numbers for James Shields. He did win his last start and he beat the Yankees and pitched very well, but before that, he had lost four consecutive games, four consecutive starts. Yeah, one and four for him, 0 oh and four for Cahill. So, you mentioned two good pitchers struggling last four to five starts. I thought the, the look of Shields when the ball went over Jennings head in center field kind of set it all when you not a big strikeout pitcher. Shields not in that category you, you kind of well, you definitely want defense. Well he needs to remember though his outfielders playing shallow helped cut down a run in the second. Exactly. And Sam Foles who right. threw out a run. Little flare shallow center and that's going to drop for a hit. Sizemore is going to come in to score, and the A's lead four to nothing. Weeks just reached for it, broke his bat, but he gets an RBI single. A very good opposite field hitting again, off speed pitch, and you could say that Jamal Weeks hit it about like was thrown by James Shields. Jennings not able to get to it quickly enough. So Ryan Swinney going to left field as a left-handed hitter. It's 
Scott Sizemore, the right-hander, goes to right center, and now Jamal Weeks, the left-hander, goes to left center. So, guys staying back on the ball, great approach, coming through with the big hits. So the A's have scored three times, and they're not done here in the fourth inning. Fold goes back and over. He's got it. So Coco Crisp is retired. Two outs. Now ready. Let's in here. Number 55. Azeki. Matsui. Really enjoy watching the dugout and seeing these guys with sweatshirts and hoods up. And let's see, today's Wednesday. Last Wednesday in Detroit it was 95. It was hot. Humid. It was hot in Detroit. What a difference 3,000 miles makes. Huh? <laughs> Drive to right. Joyce is going back, and that baby is gone. Three run homer for Matsui. A four RBI night for Hideki Matsui. 87 miles per hour and Hideki Matsui who is not being seeing a lot of pitches he doesn't have to get a swing like this. Three run home run. Only the fifth by the athletics this year and Matsui joins the other four. And right there just a great way to cap this scoring. At least to this point two outs in a very very big hit. Six run fourth inning here for the Athletics. And it was two outs last inning when Matsui hit the ball over the center fielder's head. That one's hit to left and hit well. Fold near the wall. He leaps and it is off the wall. Willingham with a double. He's a batted around. Also hit for the cycle in this <laughs> single, a couple doubles, a couple singles, a double, a triple, and a homer. How about that? Pulling the hands in. What a great job by Willingham as by the strength that he has to be able to pull the hands in, still hit the ball off the out of town scoreboard. Both thought he had a chance by going back and jumping, but there's the strength, the power of Willingham. And Guy who started it with a walk on a 3 2 pitch is up again. Strike to Jackson. So James Shields, one of the better pitchers in the American League, get knocked around by the Athletics. Last night, the A's beat David Price. So that's two All Stars. Hey, he'll, Trevor saw the Yankees do that to him in New York in his last start. He's five in the second, nine in the third, and run support very nice for Trevor Cahill tonight. Outside corner strike. So the count one and two to Jackson. And Matsui his ninth home run. Scott Baker, right hander, his first home run, and this is ninth against another writer, right hander. Seven in between against lefties, including his 500th career combined home run. That one in Detroit last week. Shields is ready. Willingham, the runner at second. That one bounce. Kochman dives, can't get it. Zobris dives, he can't get it. The ball goes past Joyce. Willingham will score easily. Connor Jackson's going to end up at third. Eight to nothing, A's.
So it'll be a single RBI and the air on the right fielder. And Joe Madden watching on Diamond Vision as once Kochman missed the ball, went to the outfield, thought there might be a play on Willingham. And Joyce is charged. The ball stayed down under his glove. Uh, Jackson goes to third on an air by Joyce in right field, but he does drive in a run, gets the RBI, and the A's just keep it going. And the beard will continue to go and grow. So Ryan Sweeney steps in. He singled earlier in this inning and scored. He also doubled in the second. So a couple of hits for Sweeney in the first four innings. There is nobody warming up in the Rays bullpen. Now the pitch count just at 70. Hickey, the pitching coach, Dave Martinez, a bench coach, talking to Joe Madden. That one on the inside corner, first strike. Three and one. Well, it's no fun if you're James Shields, but the Rays have a six man bullpen. Game tomorrow afternoon. And like you said, your pitch, I mean, it's not like you've thrown 130 pitches. Easy for me to say. I'm not getting knocked around, but it's like Shields is going to stay in there. Sweeney rips one to right, and this baby is gone. Well, I bet that feels good. <laughs> Sweeney with a smile. <laughs> uh, Shields threw him an 84 mile hour changeup. And you talk about reacting on the pitch. Is he going to get the solid treatment? <laughs> Yes, he yeah, is. I'm afraid boys, of it. Boys just sitting around. The <laughs> smile on the Hazers. They can't wait to get up and congratulate it. <laughs> so Sweeney homers. It is a nine run fourth inning. Wow. And the home run actually makes Jackson's run earned as well because even if he stays at first, he's going to score on the home run because he did get the base hit. Sweeney's last home run was May 4th of last year. 108 games, 374 at bats between home runs. Now that most of the second half of the season, as he was rehabbing from his knee surgery. Came to spring training with the A's adding a couple of outfielders, so he was along with Carter Jackson at the time the fourth and fifth outfield. And now there is some action in the Rays bullpen. Rob Delaney, who's just called up today. Seen that every game. I know they've had a new pitcher every game. Strike three called on the outside corner. What an inning by the Athletics. They score nine times against one of the best pitchers in the American League. The hits just keep coming for the Athletics.
thanks to that nine run fourth inning hits all over the board. Nine runs seven hits. A couple of walks. It was an error. So Shields is done for the night. Fold Rodriguez and Jennings. Jemiah Weeks, couple steps to his right. And that's out number one here in the fifth. But Trevor Cahill got out of a, a tough last inning at a runner at third base. Inning before, a couple of runners on. And his offense is picked up. Is that the elephant version of the panda? One, yeah, I like it. <laughs> Rodriguez struck out in the third inning. Saw Joe Gonzalez get the eight runs the first inning against the Angels and went seven innings, pitched well. Trevor Cahill trying to do the same thing. Sweeney going back near the wall. He's got it, and that's out number two. Ace Baseball and Comcast Sports Set California is brought to you by Roaring Camp Railroads. It's proud to welcome Thomas the Tank Engine on July 29th through July 31st. And August 5th through the 7th, RoaryCamp.com. So two quick outs here in the fifth inning. Top of the order, Desmond Jennings. In the first strike, Jennings has grounded out and singled. Trevor Cahill, all kinds of offense to work with. So when your team scores nine runs in an inning, it would be a good time to have a shutdown. In. Well, Rodriguez, the shortstop batting ninth, first two pitches from Trevor Cahill, curveball, just like that. So he's pitching his normal game, even though he does have a big lead. Six in a row retired by Trevor Cahill. Bottom of the fifth coming up.
the last right-handed pitcher to lead the majors in pickoffs. Charlie Huff, 16 in 1988. James Shields, who is now out of the game, has 10 this year. That's the most as of right now in the major league. But Shields is gone as he gives up 10 runs in four innings. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change, tune up and smog. Experts Rob Delaney just brought up from the minor leagues. Up and down with the Rays and their triple A team in Durham. Sure, it's not Mad Stairs. Mad Stairs got let go today by the Washington Nationals. So there's Shields with the 10 pickoffs this year. No steal attempts. Well, I'm not surprised that Charlie Huff, he of the knuckleball, in a very good move. Of course, he threw over a lot because guys like to run on him. Pop up could be playable. Shop it coming back, but he's going to run out. Oh, we, we don't know what would have happened, but I think at the top of the fourth inning with the great play, that's why the uniform of Scott Sizemore is dirty. Cliff Cleveland will take care of that tonight before tomorrow's game. But he makes the diving stop on Shopping to rob him of a double to tie the game. And then the A's come back and score nine. So a great defensive play maybe helps the A's offensively. Cahill keeps the one run lead at the time. The A's add nine in the bottom half of the inning. This one is playable, the shallow right. Joyce getting under it. Sizemore is retired, out number one. Your attention, please, ladies and gentlemen. Out pitching for the Texas ninth Bay. spot. Most number runs in an inning this year lead. by the Athletics. No surprise there, but they came close. Catcher, the number 11, Landon Sunday game Powell. right after the All Star break against the Angels, or was it? Yeah, it was a Sunday game. They scored eight in an inning, and it was eight in the first, right? So the most hits in an inning. So that's the story of the night. The nine run fourth inning for the Athletics. Sweeney a home run. It's 10 runs. Third time his career has allowed 10 runs. That's hard to believe yeah. because he's a very, very good pitcher. It's one of those nights. Joe Madden, they think that we can get out of Oakland almost like Ozzy Gann for a while with the Chicago White Sox. Seemed like they could never win here. They picked it up a little bit better, but the Rays numbers have not been good. The so Rays were not very good for a while leading up to their. Postseason years ago, the World Series in 08. Last year, within the division, but revamping. Well, and they're going to look up and see the Red Sox won again, and Red Sox are in first place. So, right now, the Rays are 11 games out. Yeah. So, I mean, reality may have to set in here and realize that the two teams ahead of you. Red Sox and the Yankees. Are you going to catch them? We'll I'll tell you first of all as they start the music about you know what this is about. 15th annual Oakland A's Beer Fest is on Saturday, July 30th from 4:05 to 6:05. It's in the East Side Club. Enjoy over 30 different microbreweries, live music, and other festivities. A souvenir beer mug and three microbrew tastings will be available for $12. Additional tastings are also available. Must be 21 or older. Admission is free with a game ticket to that evening's game against the Twins. For more information, go to OaklandAthletics.com. So here's Jamile Weeks. Early beer fest right there. 
tasters. Well, Kelly Chopper, you can go to the post game tonight thinking you've done a good job. He's keeping everything in front of him. The Shields now with Delaney. Swing and a miss by Weeks. A couple of hits for Jamal Weeks, a couple of runs scored in RBI. He's average at 308. Chases that high fastball, fouls it back. New shortstop in the game. Elliot Johnson takes over. So Rodriguez is out, Johnson in. Fair headed for the right field corner. Landon Powell's got to hurry. Weeks doesn't want to catch up with him. The ball is being juggled out there by Joyce, and now Powell's going to score. Weeks to third. Joyce just couldn't pick it up out there. I don't know if it rolled underneath a little bit. But I thought the best part about it was Jamal Weeks. With Landon at first base, Jamal just kind of shut it down on the way to first base. And then on the way to second base as Joyce went after the ball. And he played the cam, tried to barehand the ball, and then dropped it. And all the while, Landon Powell running hard, and Jamal Wick just coasted. And then Jamal said, Oh, Landon's being sent. And then he had to slide. So it goes as a triple for weeks. From an RBI and in the A's, another run. Swing and a miss. It's a generous triple. Last night, that's a single. Yeah. Ray, I said that Sean Rodriguez is out of the game. He is not. He has moved to third. So Longoria is out of the game. So the change. Sean Rodriguez now at third. Elliot Johnson is now the shortstop. Longoria is out. Johnson hitting in the cleanup spot, which is Longoria's spot. And there's the 3 1 pitch that's low, so crisp with a walk. Check the swing by Jamal Wicks. This is a fastball inside. Watch him pull the hands in. That is a great swing and open up the hips, hit the ball down the right field line. Right. And of course, with his speed, coasting because he knew Landon Powell was in front of him and did not want to push him too much. Ended up getting a third base, but what a very good swing. That's three hits tonight for Jamal Wakes. One to center, one to left center, and then takes a fastball inside and pulls it to right field. And a very, very good swing, especially the location of the pitch being inside. So the A's tonight, as I look at my scorecard, have three doubles, two triples, and two home runs. Hideki Matsuri, the first of the two in the inning. Three run shot off Team Shields. A 1 1 2 Matsui. Swing and a miss. An off speed pitch from Rob Delaney. Two to Matsui. Four RBIs tonight for Hideki. He's got more. Line drive, base hit to center field. Weeks trots in to score and give Hideki Matsui five.
five RBIs in the game. It is 12 to nothing. Well, he is staying back so well. This is an off speed pitch and just went down, served it to straightaway center field. The leg kick got the foot down and well, another very good swing in Ultramo with Hideki Matsui. Change up into center field. Sure. Delaney was wanting him to roll over on the pitch to get a ground ball, but Hideki's night. He is a triple away from the cycle. And so is Ryan Sweeney. Right. I'll take my chances at Ryan Sweeney. Unless so you get, a, the, the fact that you get you two guys. <laughs> but, we may have more. I got to check yeah. here. Now, nobody else has a home run, of course. Uh, Sizemore's got a single and a triple. triple yeah. <laughs> wow. But Sweeney or Matsui could hit a ball down the corner the way Jamal Weeks did and pick up a triple. First pitch to Willie Armstrong. Make uh, Ojek Escatronio happy. He's in the cycles. He's yeah. Willingham doubled and scored in that fourth inning. He's one for three. Well, Rob Delaney just called up from the minor leagues today. You sort of get the feeling he may be out there a while. The boys on radio be saying tomorrow, and there's a pitcher just called up today. <laughs> That's right. So Hideki Matsui, a five RBI game for the eighth time in his career. He's now got 51 RBIs and takes over the team lead from Willie. Joe Madden and Jim Hickey, manager pitching coach, have seen their starters, Helixson, going five innings. Last night it was Price going six and four tonight for Shields. Did not fare that well in the road trip, especially in New York. So we kind of know how they're feeling. It's nice that the A's are on the other end of it. Still just one out here in the fifth. Three two pitches fouled straight back by one. Two doubles, two triples, two home runs. He's last did that in September of 2002. They still have plenty of at bats in this game. They did that. But that was the 20th win of the winning streak. Still a very hard game to believe with an ace with an 11 to nothing lead. Tim Hudson on the mound. And Royals tied it. Right center. And Jennings has it. Crisp, the runner at second, will tag up and go to third. Matsui stays at first, so that's the second out. So here's Connor Jackson. So with 12 runs tonight and counting, these have now scored 60 runs in their last nine games. Nine hits last night when in, in, ended their four consecutive games of double figures and hits. So I just thinking with the A's, just three position players on the bench, two of them getting a night off, and then tomorrow that's to Jesus and Suzuki. Eric Sogard, the only other player who might get in this game tonight, is somebody a, a rest. If you're swinging this well, playing this well, you don't even want to come out of the game. 
Previous 10, just 27 runs scored. Jackson is one for two. Single and a walk, couple of runs scored in an RBI. Slider and Jackson strikes out. Two more runs for the Athletics, so what a night at the Coliseum for Hideki Matsui. 12 nothing, A's lead after five. Welcome to Two Dollar Wednesday. Cash Creek Casino Resort. Play the zone only at Cash Creek. You get a chance to play the Red Hot Zone. Visit CashCreek.com for details. 12 to nothing. The A's lead. It is the sixth inning. Trevor Cahill, who has retired six in a row. He walked Longoria leading off the fourth inning, but then he got Kotchman, Joyce, and Shopping. Three up, three down, fifth inning, and he's going to get Damon on a fly ball to Crisp, leading off the sixth. So that'll bring up Ben Zobrist. Now batting, number 18. Ben the Twins beat the Rangers Zobrist. seven to two. That's a final down in Texas. Have won the last two games in that series. It's a four game series, so they'll play another night game tomorrow night in Ireland. Rangers won on Monday night, the Twins won last night and tonight. And the Seattle Mariners won today. They beat the Yankees 9 to 2. So the 17 game losing streak comes to an end for the Mariners. Felix Hernandez. Won the game. Well, you figured that would happen eventually, as long as Felix Fernandez took the ball every fifth day and Pineda every fifth day. One of those guys had to be on the mound when the streak ended. So the Red Sox win, Yankees lose. Yeah, that's a game. Sox pick up. Change up and a good one. Zobra strikes out. That's number five for Trevor Cahill. Now I'm sure these Rays hitters are thinking with this big lead that maybe they're going to get more fastballs, but Trevor Cahill is doing a very good job of changing speeds and continue to pitch his normal game. And of course, a lot of that is his catcher Landon Powell calling those pitches, the curveballs and changeups. And as much as the hitters might be frustrated and say, throw the ball, throw fastballs, you can't criticize a pitcher for pitching his normal game. He doesn't want to just start giving up runs. 
Probably look to line of Phil Hughes on Friday night. So the offensive support he got didn't pitch deep enough to even qualify for the win. Elliot Johnson's first at bat. It's a strike. So two and two to Johnson. This is Longoria's spot. Longoria is out of the game. Swing and a miss. Another three up for down inning for Cahill as he has now retired nine in a row. Bottom of the six coming up. Up from James Shields. Really a no doubter. Hit the ball very hard to right center, but this is the part of it. The silent treatment from his teammates. And that is customary at times where the player has not hit a home run. Ryan Swinney hit against first. And I'm sure he is very happy to have done that. And as we have said, he's going to be hitting some home runs before his career is over. Right fielder, number 15, Ryan. So Sweeney will hit. So Torinos now at first base. Kochman is out. So Sweeney, a double in the second, a single in the fourth, the homer in the fifth. So we're looking for one like Grace hit. Down the right field line. Maybe right center. Don't stop running if you think you have a chance. So Sweeney's average now up to 292. 2 1 pitch, a fastball, and it's foul back. Get some good swings again. A little over eighteen thousand tonight at the ballpark. Sit back and enjoy. And happy you can say you're one of 18,000 plus here to watch this. Maybe a few more of these 18,000 will come out and see the way the A's are playing. Seven game homestand, four remaining after the night. One more against the Rays, three against the Twins. So I think
Sweeney's getting some fastballs to hit. He's just following a bat. So this will be the 10 pitch at bat. Well, might as well cap it with dinner, Francesco. So I'll just get on base and run party and chicken parmesan. Top you love off. that dish. Top it off with some tiramisu. Just got a piece of the changeup. Sign outside of Francesco's 40 seasons, 40 years actually. 40 seasons of A's baseball, they've been there. 40 years. Got it. So Sweeney with the walk. What do you have a question for Ace pregame and postgame analyst Fernando Vina? Tweet your question to at CSN Athletics with the hashtag Ask Vina, and your question could be answered tonight during A's postgame live from CSNCalifornia.com, your interactive home for A's baseball. It's all season long. I have a question, Fernando. What is that? I think you can answer that. It's an elephant hat. Can you answer that? It's an elephant hat. Good look. Pennington off the end of the bat. That'll drop in for a hit. So Pennington has his first hit tonight. The A's are at it again. Two on, nobody out. And I think you said it correctly. Richard Delaney is going to eat some innings and pitches for Joe Madden. But Pennington, a very nice sacrifice. That's probably kind of lost in that nine run inning. First two runners got on base, then Pennington laid down a perfect sacrifice and gets his first hit of the night, so he's one for three. Pennington with the sacrifice, then Scott Sizemore broke brought both runners in with his opposite field triple. Now we're going to get some action out there in that race. Bullpen. Strike to Sizemore. Single, triple, and a fly out for Sizemore. His triple was a big one, knocked in two. It was the first two runs that scored in that nine run fourth inning. Just a bit outside. You see the home plate umpire Sam Holbrook. Kind of look to his right. Meany. Pitch was outside. And now full count. And it's a walk. The A's have the bases loaded and nobody out. Uh, in the fourth inning, first two runs scored thanks to this opposite field triple by Scott Sizemore. Showing his speed and Connor Jackson scoring. I'm running, swinging, and Scott Sizemore hit first slide for a triple. One of two of the A's have hit tonight. So Rob Delaney has the bases loaded and nobody out with Landon Powell, the hitter. So the A's are poised for more. Number 11, Landon Powell.
So a big chance for Powell. First pitch he is down and away. Popped up. The second baseman Zobrist backpedaling. And he's got it. Runners hold. So Powell cannot get the run home. I mean, just a little bit too far out in front and could only lift the ball. So his bat in disgust. He knew he had a chance to drive home some runs. Big night for weeks, three hits. The A's have 16 hits and they've received five walks. That went into right, hit pretty well. Joyce going back near the wall and he makes the catch right in front of the wall. It's going to get a run home as oh. Sweeney tags up. Now it's going to be a double play. Wow. You know, Sizemore had gone all the way to second and he just didn't get back. So that's how the inning ends. It's time for Coors Light Freeze. Man. Coors Light Freeze Game is brought to you by Frostbrook Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. 13 to nothing, the A's lead here in the top of the seventh inning. 13 runs and 16 hits. The Rays have just two hits. The Trevor Kales first pitch is bounced in the hole and it's into left field the base hit for Robinson Chirinos. Time now for our subway eat fresh ask Glenn and Ray question. Nick from Citrus Heights asked, Ray, I've heard you say Powder River when talking about a good fastball. Where did that term come from? Powder River. Well, something that probably could not ne could never hit. Powder River fastball. I don't know where it came from. You know? There's must have I'm sure there's. I know there's an explanation. No question. There's an origin somewhere. Larry's probably going to put it on the screen. Size more to Weeks, and that's a double play. Matt Joyce hits into the 5 4 3 double play. Nicely turned. Weeks was kind of shaded away from the bag quite a ways because Joyce is a left handed hitter, so he had a hustle to get over there. 
Well, he has the speed to be able to do exactly that. And with All Joyce right. going to the opposite side, Joyce Tripp getting out of the batter's box, which helped. And Weeks avoiding the hard slide. That's why Joyce was slow getting to the bag. There's the hard slide by Kochman going into Jamal Weeks, but able to jump over him. So two outs here in the top of the seventh inning. As Cahill continues to cruise along. He had retired nine in a row before that Torino space hit. And he was immediately taken off the bases with the double play. Side to Kelly Shopik, who has struck out and was robbed of a. Probably would have been a double down the left field line as Sizemore dove, caught it, threw him out, and it came with a runner at third base in two outs. Weeks has it scoot under his glove. Shopik's aboard. I don't know if Josh Hood is going to put the description of Powder River so we can see it. Delaire is telling me that. River in Montana that the sand looks like black gum. Uh -huh. Looks like what? Black gum. Oh, okay. It's a coal mining river. And I guess as the ball comes out, it's a powder river. So the ball kind of a fastball. Hard. Maybe difficult to pick up because it's coming out of the river. Shot out of a gun. Right? All right. All right. Like bullets. You guys are doing a good job explaining this. I have no clue what the is talking about, but Maybe in the future I will not say powder river. <laughs> Especially if I had to try to explain it. Well, at least I, at least our fans are listening. Yeah, I had a powder river thrown at me a few times and most of them I could not hit. Weeks on the back end, he handles this one, flips to Pennington, side retired. Very nice play by Jamile Weeks. Seventh inning stretch coming up 13 to nothing. Easily. Seventh inning of the O.Co. Coliseum. One more game in this series. It'll be a day game. No TV. Radio only tomorrow. And then the Twins come in. Three game series. And the A's go out on a very long road trip. Hideki Matsui will hit second in this inning. And we'll look forward to that at bat because he needs a triple for the cycle. But he's wanting to borrow some of Coco's crisp speed. Yeah. Oh, Matsui can run when he 
Smith gets going. Very good speed. Chirinos juggles but picks it up, throws to Delaney, and that is out number one here in the bottom of the seventh. Hey, baseball and Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Jack in the Box. For a limited time, Jack's really big chicken sandwich combo is back. Two chicken patties, bacon, melting Nothing cheese, better. and it's served with 20-ounce drink and small seasoned curly fries for only $3.99 plus tax. It's at participating restaurants. So here's Matsui. We're looking for a triple. Knees for strike from Rob Delaney, who is in his third inning of work. Had a triple last year in September, did Matsu. Well, <laughs> turn it over. Hit to left field and hit pretty well. Fold going back. He's going to have room. Is he? Right at the warning track, and he makes the catch, and that's out number two. Well, you see the flags in the view quarter in left field blowing very hard. The wind's been blowing hard all night. Yeah. The ball might have been knocked down. As Matsui looked like he hit it quite well. Yeah, our papers are blowing around, and that usually does not happen up here. Look at my heavy jacket. It's cold. No, breezy night. <laughs> Willingham is one for four. Doubled and scored in that big fourth inning. When the A's scored nine times. Sent 12 men to the play. Rodriguez, the third baseman, is battling it, makes the catch, so. Rob Delaney with a three up through down seventh inning and we head to the eighth. Deal at Bay Area Baseball, Comcast Sports in California's Authentic Fan Fridays here at the Coliseum. 12 bucks gets you a ticket and our value deck. It's behind no plate, gets you an authentic 80s fan t shirt, a cheer card, and a $6 food and drink voucher. Join us on Friday night when the Minnesota Twins are in town. That will be our next Authentic Fan Friday. You saw the authentic Raleigh Fingers look alike uh -huh. in the stands. Handlebar mustache. He's got the right jersey on too. That looks real, doesn't it? There he is. 
Raleigh would be proud. Raleigh's a Hall of Fame. And Trevor Cahill has been very good tonight, which is great to see after the tough outing in his last start. Seven shutout innings so far. This will be pitch number 98. Off walk to Sean Rodriguez. Time now for the Home Depot doing more on defense. And boy, there have been some good defensive plays tonight for the Athletics. And how about we start with this play? Jeff Pennington going up the middle over the second base side and across his body. Jamal Weeks in the same inning throws across his body over to the shortstop. This is the play of the game right here. Scott size more. He has a one and nothing lead. Marvin Kelly shopping. Of a double and an RBI, which would have tied the game, saved the run. The A's scored nine in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Jennings half swing fouls it into the seats. Walk to Rodriguez, the third walk for Cahill in the game. He's got six strikeouts. Curve stays high. Everything's finally the American League now, except this game. And that East Boston won, the Yankees lost. He's dropped a game in the standings. They're now three back for the Red Sox. Red Sox beat Kansas City 12 to 5. So Boston just keeps on scoring runs in bunches. But if you at all have a vulnerable pitching staff, well, they will make you pay. And the 3 2 pitch is way outside. So back to back walks here in the end. Two out, nobody out for Johnny Davis. Breslow starts to throw. He'll get a little more time as Ron Romanek heads out. In that AL Central, the Tigers lost today. The White Sox beat the Tigers two to one, so a big win for the White Sox. The Indians lost. So Detroit in first pace, Cleveland two out. And the White Sox now three and a half. White Sox trading Edwin Jackson today. Now batting number 22. And the, in the AL West, the Rangers lost and the Angels won and Seattle won. So the Angels pick up a game. They're two back in the West of Texas. Strike to Johnny Damon down around the game. Couple games going on in the National League still. Arizona and San Diego. Diamondbacks with a 4 3 lead in the seventh. And the Rockies leading the Dodgers 1 0 in the seventh at Dodger Stadium. Light drive, but it's foul. In that NL East, the Braves picked up a game. The Phillies were defeated by the Giants, and Atlanta won. Atlanta's now five back of Philadelphia. Still got some work to do. Just a bit outside. Close pitch. The Brewers won and the Cardinals lost, so Milwaukee jumps over St. Louis into first place. So that division's back and forth. The ugly play in the Milwaukee game. Ricky Weeks, Jamal's brother, terrific player, but stepped on the bag trying to beat out an infield hit and hurt his ankle. And 
he had to be helped off big time, and he was taken to the hospital. Is what we are told. It was an, kind of an ugly play, and a scary play, and it did not look good. That's just I saw the video a couple times. The only report we have is that they did take X-rays; they were negative, but he still went to the hospital. Not as bad as Stephen Drew, but still. No, it, it wasn't looked, like that. Very but, bad. Ugh, yeah. He was. He got helped off. And his foot was fully supported. He was not putting any weight on. Let's hope Ricky Weeks is okay, but it was kind of an ugly play. Two and two to Damon. Pops that one up. Going to be Cliff Pennington calling off Sizemore, and that's out number one. Bob Melvin's coming out. So Breslow's going to come in. 113 pitches for Trevor Cahill. And a very good outing for Cahill. So he goes seven and a third. Shutout baseball, and he's going to get a nice ovation as he walks off. Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Xfinity, home of the most live sports, and by Chevrolet. Go to ChevyBaseball.com to support youth baseball and help make a moment kids will never forget. Breslow comes in, and the first pitch is outside. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and small experts. Appearance number 44 for Breslow. He comes in with two out and one out to face Ben Zobrist. Zobrist is a switch hitter. This is the first appearance in this series for Breslow. Four hits, no runs, four walks, six strikeouts for Trevor Cahill. Pitching into the eighth inning. Well, two, the, two walks in this inning hurting, no doubt. To at the point where he could not finish the eight innings. Randall McCarthy, who is to his left, demonstrating his hitting ability. Went eight innings last night. Very good job. Probably the biggest game in the series was Monday night when Moscoso just gave up five. The A's came back and down five to two. Trading five to two, came back with one seven to five, and then was winning last night six to one. Good breaking ball for Breslow. He gets the strikeout on Zobrist. Two outs here in the top of the eighth. Hard slider down and in, and of course, Breslow coming in, trying to keep the runs on the base. Uh, Trevor K. Hills, the inherited runs, did not like for those to score.
So here's Elliot Johnson. Johnson is also a switch hitter. Second at bat. Fastball, swing and a miss. Strikes in there as he's ahead in the count one and two. The A's have out hit the race sixteen to four tonight. Another foul ball. This one down the right field line. Look at the pitching staff, of course, appreciative of all the run support. No doubt they're also thinking about they want to do their part. Just watching the Ricky Weezy Hopper extended. Oh. Like the knee also. As he hit the back, knee hyper extended. Oof. Well, we both had the same look on our face when we saw the highlight. Hey, nothing good about that high. Well, that wasn't a highlight. That more of a low light. Low light. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Top of the line, low light. A couple of the starters, Moscoso and Gio. Gio had the run support in the game against the Angels here. They run first day. Moscoso would like to get some run support. Gio will pitch Friday night in the series opener against the Twins. Good pitch, swing and a miss by Johnson. So Breslow comes in, strikes out Zobras, strikes out Johnson, and the Rays do not score. Here's our game summary. It's brought to you by your local Toyota dealers. Nine runs in the fourth inning by the Athletics. They have scored 13 total. 13 16 and 0 for the A's. 0 4 and 1 for the Rays. Runners in scoring position this series. The Rays 1 for 26. Another big game for Matsui. Five RBIs. Got a couple guys. Need a chance for the cycle. Ryan Sweeney, a single, a double, and a homer. Hideki Matsui, a single, double, and a homer. Sweeney's going to get a chance to hit in this inning. When it's time for a change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tuna. Your oil change tune up and spawn experts. Brandon Gomes comes in. He pitched in game one of this series. First pitch to Connor Jackson is high. Jackson, Sweeney, and Pennington. So Sweeney in the on deck circle will get the chance. 
the second. You're hoping, aren't you? I am hoping. Yeah, I am too. It'd be nice. Especially for a guy who's not hit a home run all season. To hit <laughs> one and have that not be. But he has double single home run. I mean, if you haven't hit a home run all season and you hit one, that's a pretty good chance. Well, for the cycle, especially you already had the double in the same. So what are you pulling for? Chirinos picks it up on the short hop. So one out here in the bottom of the eighth. They go deep with Sportsnet Central. It's brought to you by Hyundai. It's tonight at 10 30 over at your sister station, Concord right. Sportsnet Bay right. Area. Little highlights from the game here at the Coliseum. Frank Gore running back for the 49ers is holding out. A lot going on in the NFL and a busy day at the Major League Baseball front. David Andrews, Scott Reese will host a couple of trades, a big three team trade. Cardinals, the Jays, and the White Sox. A bunch of names involved. The Giants got Carlos Beltran, which will be official tomorrow. Tino De Los Santos throwing for the eighth, so looks like he's going to finish this baby up in the ninth. One and one to Ryan Sweeney. Eric Sogard has come out into the on deck circle. He'll hit the Pennington spot. A little bit off the plate. Did you say somebody in football is holding out? Yeah, Frank Gore. <laughs> That's a good one. You're right. <laughs> really? They just, no sense to me. They decided they're going to play football. That's the first thing you talk about somebody holding <laughs> out. That's funny. You're right. I didn't think about that so much. Frank Gore, the running back for the 49ers, is holding out. That's almost like a comic strip. 150 day lockout. All right, lockout's over. Let's play. I'm holding out. <laughs> And probably never said one thing for all that time they were locked out that he was holding up. <laughs> Soft line drive. Zobrist has it for out number two. So yeah, so the agent says calls the 49ers. Everybody's excited <laughs> getting back to work. My guy's holding out. <laughs> Not coming to training camp. Your attention please, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen for the athletics. So here's Sogard. Eric Sogard. I'm glad Eric got in the game because he probably would be the only one to get in. As tomorrow. Like Kurt Suzuki would be back in the lineup. We'll see if David Dave's is a big night for Ryan Sweeney, but at least tonight, Kurt Suzuki has had the game off. Sogard takes a stride. Side to Sogar. Sogar so far this year, two hits in 11 at bats. He's appeared in four games. Both his hits are doubles. He's got a couple of RBIs. Swing there, fouls it straight back. So again, tomorrow's game, radio only. So listen to. Ken Vince on Sports Radio 95.7 FM. Wade Davis, Rich Hart is the pitching manager. First pitch is scheduled for 12:35. I have the pregame. Yes, you will. So listen before 12:35. Yeah. Come on, man. <laughs> that ball somehow gets to the outfield. Sogard will take it. Couple dives, nobody could get it. How fitting is that? Sits on the bench for eight innings. Seven and a half comes in, bottom of the eighth, pinch in for Cliff Pennington. That's a hot spot in the batting order. The shortstop Pennington and so guard the dive there. We've seen twice tonight where first base and second base were both diving for the ball, missed it, and then the other time Joyce missed it also the right field. So Sizemore will get his fifth at bat. He's two for three. Hit number 17 for the A's tonight. It's the only activity 
Andrew Bailey's going to have tonight. That's retreating a ball overthrown by Santos. Pitch there in the inside corner. Sizemore singled in the second, tripled in a pair of runs in the fourth and later scored. And hit a fly ball to right field in the fifth. And he walked in the sixth. So after a bit of a tough stretch for Sizemore, he's starting to swing the bat better. One for four in this series coming into the game today. Strike three called, little delayed call by Sam Holbert. Side retired, and we're going to the ninth. De Los Santos coming in. 13 to nothing, A's lead. With a 13 to nothing lead as they're closing in on their third consecutive win over the Rays. He's also seven and four in the second half. They win this one, they'll be eight and four. So play much better baseball in the second half of this season. When it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and smog experts. Fantino de los Santos comes in here, try to wrap it up. And as my partner always says, Let's have a clean ninth inning. That's right. That's the way to do it, especially with the pitching. And yeah, he scored 13 runs. You'd like to get the zero in the column for sure. the opposition. So De Los Santos is ready. He'll face Chirinos, Joyce, and Shopik here in the ninth. First pitch is 95 on the block. You know, and I want to go through this night without mentioning Brad Ziegler. This date in 2008, Ziegler, of course, is rookie season. Yeah. So that ball stays in. We'll continue. Throws so two scoreless innings to establish a major league record to start his major league career. 27 scoreless innings, breaking the previous mark. 25 set by George McQuillan, the 1907 Philadelphia Phillies. Streak went go 39 innings for Brad Ziegler to start oh. his major league career. 2008, and here he is, 2011. And did a very good job for the A's bullpen. Became the closer. 
And Andrew Bailey took over his closer and for Zig. Excellent, especially throwing the ground balls, keeping the ball in the park. But that was a great start for Brad Ziggler. It just seemed like he would never give up a run. For 39 innings, he didn't. Leadoff single by Robinson Chirino. Time now for the Fremont Bank plays of the game. Trevor Cahill came in a nice game. Four game losing streak, and he performed very well. He started out in the first inning throwing a very good two seam fastball and changeup, and he would continue pitching well for seven and a third innings, giving up just four hits, striking out six, probably the four walks, considering the lead he had, but the chain speaks very effectively. Leaves after seven and a third, and the A's do not give up 13. He has a chance, and he will get back to the 500 mark. Eight yeah. and nine starting the night, and Hopes to be nine and nine at the end of this game. He did not want to have a reoccurrence of the 20th consecutive victory. He has had the big lead and blew it, but won it. Hit list tonight for Matt Joyce. Fastball. Justin Ruggiano has come out into the on deck circle. He'll hit for shopping. Ruggiano, seeing a lot of new players with the Tampa Bay Rays in this series. It's the first meeting between the two. You know, every time I look at that backdrop signers, I see 95.7 of course it's a film, the radio station the is. I think of the 95.7 a week ago in Detroit. <laughs> Is in hot? temperature yeah. first pitch. Yeah. And we're freezing tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what a difference. The See the, the the difference is though when it's cold you can put a jacket on. When it's hot you can't take your shirt <laughs> That's off. That's true. Nor would anybody <laughs> want. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Like you got your big heavy jacket on, which is perfect. That was not happening on our road trip. And the A's will. Yeah, also on a road trip, yeah, we'll play nine games at three different dome parks. Right. So retractable, two of them retractable. The one in the truck, we'd like to see it retract, but it's not going to. Seattle, Toronto, or Seattle, Tampa Bay, Toronto. With two days off. Remember when we first saw the schedule at the end of last year? Right field hit pretty well. Sweeney's back. He's near the wall, and it is gone. Matt Joyce with his 15th home run, and the Rays are on the board. Now that's a 3 2 fastball. First of all, De Los Santos falling behind Joyce. And a little bit of a tailing action on the fastball. But Joyce looking for it. And when you're sitting 3 and 2 with no possibility of anything but a fastball, that's the type of swing you can put on a pretty good fastball thrown by De Los Santos. And it's a little bit easier to hit that way and not thinking about off speed. Here's Justin Ruggiano. Hitting for shopping. Follow straight back. So I was saying, I remember seeing the schedule for the first time, and A's director of team travel, Mickey Morabito, said, Look at this trip here. Yeah. And it was the one that we're talking about Seattle to Tampa to Toronto, and then back home. There's always a couple tough trips each season. Weeks charges and he kind of rolls it to first. I think he wanted to flip it with his glove, and it did not work this time. So Ruggiano is aboard, and that might uh, cause a visit from his infield coach, Mike Gallego. You're exactly right. He was going to just flip it, but he looked up, and that was the mistake. So he never had it in his glove. No, and then 
if he throws it towards the first baseman Jackson that's okay but they kicked it with his left knee and that changed direction on the ball and then collided with Connor Jackson. Five, seven, Not a very good play all the way around. So it is an error on weeks still nobody out here's full. Fastball first right. And it's not a clean ninth inning. <laughs> it's single homer air. Good pitch there, 96 miles an hour, right down the corner. But inside. Sean Rodriguez is in the on deck circle. Fold goes after that high fastball. Tough one to catch up to at the speed that De Los Santos throws it at. No swing, says Joe West. Good to see a breaking ball from De Los Santos. He's just been featuring the fastball as the Powder River. <laughs> <laughs> Which means it's very fast. Black gum powder. Shot out of a gun. Next time, Delaire will have a graphic put up by the great graphics man, Josh Hood. So, full count to fold. Foul past George Hendrick, who decides he's just going to let it roll on by. Easy, George, and he was talking about Brad Ziggler. He was sitting there just enjoying a nice evening with his jacket on, staying warm. And Another one past George. <laughs> He's just getting out of the way. He has it's nothing to do with anything hit hard. <laughs> One is okay. Two, come on. George looks like he's in pretty good shape. He doesn't yep. look a whole lot different than he did yep. as a player. Has not changed one bit. Played for the A's of Cleveland. St. Louis, 18 major league seasons. 72 world champion. I think he was with the Cardinals in 82 as well. Won a World Series with St. Louis. George, a great hitter, great center fielder. You're right, great shape as he talked about retiring a couple of years ago, but here he is still with the Rays and an important part of this. So coaching staff put together by Joe Madden. Jackson handles it, steps on the bag at first, and was thinking about throwing it to second, but when he slipped on the bag, he just made sure he got the out at first. So Fold is retired. Home Depot doing more on defense right there. Connor got it. The bag and Oh, that's dangerous. Wow. Now batting, number one. Came up, fortunately, it seems to be okay, but the top of the bag, very slippery. And I don't know if Ricky Weeks had that problem in Milwaukee tonight when he injured himself. But you kind of want to push off on the side, not put your foot on the top. First pitch to Rodriguez is bounced to third. Sizemore has it. And that's out number two here in the ninth. Well, our next televised game will be Friday night. Game one, Twins A's. It'll be 
Gio Gonzalez and Francisco Liriano. Gio looking for his 10th win of the year. 6.30 A's pregame live, and then the ballgame after that. Complete A's coverage every night on Sportsnet Central and CSNCalifornia.com. The home of the A's is Comcast Sportsnet California. So join us for that Friday night. Gio on the mound against Liriano. Twins, another team that see a lot of their players mentioned in trade rumors. See if they will make any deals over the weekend. Desmond Jennings, a good swing, fouls a straight back. Twenty-eight pitches in the inning for De Los Santos. Good one there. And now the count one and two. For those in the crowd that have stuck around, rise to their feet. He's trying to pick up their 47th win of the year. In the dirt and to the backstop. Hard. Sharp breaking curveball. Sorginio is now at third. Big night for that man, Ryan Sweeney. Connor Jackson. Couple of runs scored and hit everybody contributed tonight offensively for the Athletics. Three and two now to Desmond Jennings. He can throw him a slider close to the plate, game over. Because there's no way in the world Jennings is thinking anything but a fastball. Probably the pitch he's going to get. And that one's hit into left field for a base hit. Eugenio trots in to score. So Jennings gets his second hit. Picks up an RBI. And that's the problem. And Bob Melvin's going to Brad Zegler. We're going to get a pitching change. So 32 pitches thrown by De Los Santos here in the ninth, and he cannot get that final out when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change, tune up and smog expert. Ziegler coming in. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. So Brad Ziegler will try to get the final out, and it'll be Johnny Damon hitting. 
The Rays have scored three times here in the ninth inning. That one to the backstop and Jennings will go to second. Ninth inning has taken an awful long time. Too long when you have the kind of lead, but I think what happens too, you just get to the point where you throw a lot of fastballs. You know, Santos was featuring nothing but fastballs, give up the two run home run and the E4. A couple of ground ball outs, and here we are. Another one. So Damon's going to have an RBI single as Jennings races around to score. Well, these uh, doesn't matter their runs, but they are unearned with the and by Wicks in a couple of ground ball out should have been over with, but this ball elevated a little bit. Johnny Damon, his first hit of the night. So guard, good effort. So here's Zobrist. That's low. Zobrist homered on Monday night, homered on Tuesday night, tonight. He's have kept him in the yard. Just one for four. Just a bit inside. Two and one the count. Zobrist only hit a single way back in the first inning. And off the foot, I should say, of Zobrist as he goes down. That's something you like to do in the last inning, first inning, any inning, and right off the top of the foot, the shin guard above, and of course on the shin, on the inner part, expecting a two seam fastball, but this time on the foot. Oh. That was a direct yeah. shot as well. Now Brad Ziegler pitching again a few of those because he has a great two seam fastball, the sinker that just starts up a little bit and then goes down very quickly. Two two pitch, swing and a miss, and that's the ball game. So the Rays do score four times in the ninth, but still well short. The A's. 13 runs tonight on 17 hits, and they win their third in a row. So the A's now 47 and 57. Ryan Sweeney, a big night.